And thank you all for making the time. As you can see, I spent a huge amount of energy this afternoon making this uh, background as Christmassy as possible. Wonderful that you could make the time to be with us and particularly good to have uh, Edouard Mouex, an old friend of Corny Barrow's and uh, whose family uh, and Corny Barrow have been together for decades and decades and decades. Uh, Edouard is uh, the, uh, the CEO of uh, Etablissement Jean-Pierre Mouex and also having joined the company in 2003, I think, uh, uh, responsible for the running of uh, Autre Rivage, which is the uh, negociant responsible for both Californian wines and left bank Bordeaux. Uh, he lives with his uh, lovely life, Kelly, in uh, Chateau Bel Air Monange, uh, which he and we confidently believe will be uh, the greatest wine in uh, Saint Emilion and the most beautiful, beautiful property. And we thought uh, in conversations over the last few weeks that it would be terrific uh, to uh, present just before Christmas uh, a trio uh, of wines from certainly one of my favorite vintages, uh, the purists and classicists like Mr. Hargrove, fine wine director, of course, prefers 2016, uh, which most uh, uh, people do, but 15 I adore, uh, just beginning to show beautifully now. And the wines that we chose, uh, Will, Edward and I, uh, were three of our favorites. Uh, Natua Pomerol, of course, one of the great legends uh, of Pomerol and uh, really, I think, uh, perhaps the most massively underestimated great, great wine, uh, which is probably a little bit of a reflection on us, come to think of it. Uh, La Grava Pomerol, uh, which is actually the home of uh, good, good friend Laurent Navarre uh, and uh, is a beautiful property with the most fabulous gravel soils. Uh, and then Lagrange, uh, which is another personal favorite. So those are the three wines. Uh, one vintage, three beautiful wines, tiny properties. Edouard's going to do, uh, take us through with a, a, a little PowerPoint, beautiful PowerPoint presentation uh, of the wines. Uh, and then questions uh, throughout, uh, he prefers, we prefer uh, the questions come throughout uh, this uh, tasting rather than waiting to the end. Or if you want to use the chat box and tap away on that, we'll pick those up as Colette made clear. So Edouard, thank you. Thank you for being here uh, and for joining uh, many good friends of Corning Barrow and look forward to it. Can't wait. In fact, I desperately need something to drink. So I, well, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adam, for uh, such a, a nice and, and short introduction. Uh, um, we, uh, it's, it's, it's true that we've been uh, playing around uh, the, the idea of, of organizing that tasting since the first confinement, actually. Um, but, uh, but everyone was, uh, was not really ready to, uh, to, to, to do so, especially technically. Um, and and it's, uh, it's a great honor for me to, to, to be here tonight. Um, and I actually, I'm, I'm joined by a, a good friend from England uh, who got stuck in Saint-Emilion for, for, for the last month and a half and for the next God knows how many months. Um, so it, 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 the, the ambience is, uh, is there. It's, it's, it's all around. Um, I've, I've, uh, I've put together a, a, a little presentation um, just to, uh, so, so you can understand uh, um, a little more precisely, it's not a commercial presentation, it's just uh, a, a few images uh, um, and it will, it will uh, um, sort of rhythm the, the, the presentation, um, the tasting. So this is actually where, where I am right now, uh, um, on, in the office in Libourne, where my, my grandfather started the, the company in 1937 as a wine merchant, which is still our main activity, as Adam was, was underlining. Uh, um, I, I spend the, 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 most of my time sitting in, the, in these offices, um, and we, we distribute wines from the right bank and the left bank, of course, and as well our properties in Napa Valley. Um, so there's an, if we can change slide, I, I don't have, well, well, you, you know where is Bordeaux, so I will, we will skip this one. Um, so that's uh, the, the, the images of the, the three people, uh, the three, the three uh, generations. So my grandfather, uh, my father then joined in 1970 and myself in 2003. Um, even if I had been uh, uh, trained, uh, um, especially by, by Corny and Barrow, and Adam has put many, many efforts in, into trying to, to make a, a good person, a, 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 
you know, like asking me to shave, which he has not succeeded. Uh, um, but uh, but I, I was I was thrilled and honored to be uh, to to be trained by great partners and and friends like like Cornyn and Barrow. Um, the the next slide is actually more interesting. Voilà. So in, in 37, my, my grandfather uh, started as a, as a wine merchant, but very quickly, and unlike most people in the region, um, it invested in vineyards as soon as he could uh, afford it. Um, so in 1950, he purchased Chateau Lafleur Petrus. In 1952, Chateau Magdalene in saint emilion In 1953, Trotan Wine Lagrange, which we have tonight. Uh, 1962, he took the farming contract of, of Latour. Um, Latour Apomol is not a vineyard we own. Uh, it, it was owned at the time by uh, um, Madame, uh, um, Madame Luba, who owned Latour and Petrus. Um, and my, my grandfather took the farming contract and the distribution contract of, of Latour in 62, purchased uh, Petrus around those years also. Um, and, uh, and, and Latour uh, is now owned by, uh, uh, by a charity, by, by uh, a foyer de charité, as we say in French. Uh, so we, we run the vineyard for, for them and we are honored to, to be able to do that. Um, and therefore, on top of, of, of trying to make uh, the best possible wines on this vineyard, it's, it's for the good cause and it's, it's properly for the good cause and not only for the thirst uh, 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 of, of our thirst and, the, and your thirst. Um, then my, my father joined the, the company in, in 1970 and that was a turning point in the company because my, my grandfather was a self-made man um, and uh, he had a great nose, a great eye and understood an amazing understanding of quality. Uh, my father was trained as an agronomist and winemaker. So he joined the company in 70 and was immediately in charge of the running of the vineyards we had and the vineyards we, we, we purchased, uh, uh, we added to the collection uh, uh, in, in the following years and, and really uh, uh, allowed the quality of those wines to, to jump a few steps. Uh, the, the most uh, um, uh, um, unusual element that he introduced in very quickly in 1973 um, was actually the crop thinning. The crop thinning is, is, was something that no one would, would do at the time. Um, and he realized in 73 that there was so many fruit on the vines uh, um, that those tiny little vines could not mature that amount of fruit. So he had the idea of uh, a thinning uh, uh, of cutting uh, uh, a, a few of, the, of those clusters uh, to allow the vine to concentrate on, on the remaining ones, um, which helped a lot. And, and thanks to that, we, uh, 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 we have managed to produce a 73, which was a catastrophic vintage, uh, uh, which is descent. Uh, um, and, uh, and, and then uh, over the years, he, he put together, I mean, he, he, he uh, um, managed to, uh, to uh, uh, get better in, in, into the crop thinning. And, and still today, we, we add some evolutions to it, of course, uh, uh, adapting to the, 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 the climate uh, um, and the global warming uh, uh, in general. And 15 will be a good example for that. Um, but if we move to the next slide, uh, uh, you will see that we, we kept on, uh, um, on, on uh, um, investing into vineyards. So in 1982, my father uh, um, uh, started a joint venture in Napa Valley uh, um, on, on the, the, the oldest vineyard planted in the valley in 1838 uh, called Napanook. Um, so the, and, and created the label Dominus. Uh, um, so the first vintage of Dominus was 1983. Um, then there was a, a little pause um, in, in, in this part of the, of, of the graph. But in fact, we purchased quite a few vineyards in Fronsac. Um, and uh, and we, we sold those vineyards in 2000 because uh, uh, we decided to concentrate on the, on, on the top terroirs of, uh, of, of Bordeaux and Napa, um, and therefore uh, 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 had the opportunity to, to, to sell all the vineyards in Fonsac, La Dauphine, Canon Moix, Canon de Brême, La Croix Canon, uh, Milari, we, we had quite a few vineyards. Um, 
the, the Osana in 99, which is a great little uh, uh, vineyard that used to be called Certain Giro, but Giro was the name of the previous owners. So we had to change the, the name. Uh, I very discreetly joined in 03, concentrating on the, on the wine merchant part. Um, and, and in 2008, we purchased a, a vineyard called Chateau Bel Air, uh, which is now the, the, the center of all our efforts. Um, because it, it is one of the greatest vineyards in, in, in Bordeaux, uh, but it needs a lot of love in order to, to go back to, to, uh, to, to its, uh, its, its pinnacle. Um, and we have a few other vineyards, Uly Ulysses, etc. So if we move to the next slide, um, so we are, we will concentrate on the wine production. And of course, as you understood, uh, especially since my father uh, uh, joined the company in 70, the center of our attention was the, 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 the quality of, of, of the vineyards. Um, so we, 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 uh, uh, we have always been centered around the fruit. The winemaking part is, of course, key, uh, uh, is, is uh, um, the, the translation of all the efforts that, that, that we make in the vineyard. But without those efforts, there is no proper translation. Um, and, and, and therefore, we have always pampered our, our vineyards plowing the soil. I know it's not very good on, uh, on the images because it makes uh, clean soils, but it's the healthier, it's the, it's the most natural way to, to produce wine, to leave grass growing uh, uh, on, in, the, in, 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 in the rows is actually the, the best way to compact the soils. The soils are not compacted by tractors, unlike what, what people make you think. Uh, um, the soils are compacted by rain. And so if you don't plow your, 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 your soils, uh, uh, you don't aerate them. And therefore, the, each time there, 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 there is rain, uh, uh, the, the, the space in between the elements gets compacted, compacted, compacted. And that's how you, 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 you end up suffocating your vines. Uh, um, so uh, uh, th these, these little elements, which are obviously a little boring, are absolutely key. And for us, plowing the, the, the vine is, is, the, is the basics of farming. And we are farmers. Uh, um, and uh, uh, and, and the, the, the best way to allow the, the, the vine to express itself at, at its best, to breathe, to be able to develop its, its root system as deep as possible uh, um, and, and to get rid of the tiny radicule, the, the tiny little roots that will develop under the surface, uh, uh, just to force the vine to always go and, and get the, the best of the soils. Um, and it's true in France as it is in, in California, which allows, by the way, us in California not to be, uh, uh, not, not to irrigate. We are fully dry farmed in, in Napa, which is mind blowing when you think of it, especially in the later vintages with the, those awful stories with fires and, and, uh, uh, and fires. I mean, uh, um, it's, uh, uh, it, it, the fires are due to the droughts, uh, uh, to the desertification of, of, of Northern California. Uh, uh, and at the same time, we managed to produce wine still this year uh, without a drop of irrigation because the vines are healthy and well established in the soil and there is enough moisture in the soil. So th these, these are elements for us which are key, absolutely key. Um, and of course, with that in mind, we, uh, uh, um, we, we, we always, we don't have to, to claim on all the roofs that uh, uh, nature comes first because uh, uh, without nature, there's, there's no farmer and there's no wine uh, and that would be terrible. Um, so uh, um, it's, it, it's really ab ab absolutely key. So if we move to the next slide, which, um, voila. So ah. now we can concentrate on wine um, and we can concentrate on uh, 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 the, the parcels uh, um, where the, the first wine comes from. So the, that, that little satellite image is uh, um, an image of half of the appellation of Pomerol. So Pomerol is 800 hectares on the right bank. Uh, um, it's on the northeast part of, of Libourne. We are quite far away from the coast. So we have a very different climate from, from, from the Medoc, from the left bank. Um, just to give you an idea, uh, um, where I am right now, if I were to drive to Montrose in Saint-Estef, it's precisely 101 kilometers. 
Um, so uh, uh, you, you, you can imagine the difference in weather within those 101 kilometers driving west, so towards the ocean, and having to, to cross one river, la Dordogne, and an estuary, the Gironde. Uh, um, so we have a completely different climate. Medoc, it's fully oceanic, uh, where for us we are partially oceanic, but we have a, a huge influence from, from the continents. Um, so the, the oceanic part brings the moisture, it brings the heat, of course, uh, um, especially in, in the cold season. The continental part uh, 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 brings uh, uh, um, more, more uh, slightly drier uh, um, weather, uh, um, and it brings, uh, uh, it brings coolness in, 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 the, in, in the summer. So, which means that we have a, a much more uh, regulated uh, uh, temperature throughout the year. You see, right now it's eight degrees. We are in. Uh, we are the 17th of December. Uh, um, last year we didn't have one frost th throughout the entire winter. Uh, um, and but at the same time, we normally have a fairly low amount of water. Um, the average in on, on the right bank is four is 944 four millimeters of rain per year. Uh, this year, 2020, has been extremely wet. Uh, we are already at 1,270 millimeters, uh, uh, which is very, very high. But we were lucky to have some, some dry periods, which allowed us to, to produce wine. Um, I'm not going to say that it's the best vintage ever because you will say, oh, another Bordelais vintage. Um, but it's true that in, in, uh, in the last few years, Bordeaux and, and the, the, the wines in France in general uh, took advantage of, of the global warming. So did you in England for sparkling and steel wines, uh, uh, which are getting better and better. Yes, of course, there's, uh, uh, there, there's the, the understanding of the soils, the understanding of the technique, but without the sun, uh, you, you, you don't get anything ripe. And, and so it's true that in Europe, we do still today take advantage of that global warming. Um, so if we go back to the map, uh, Chateau Lagrange, it's a beautiful little property. It's nine hectares. Um, it's three, uh, three different blocks. So it's the blocks in red. Um, and we are on the northern part, as you can see, of the Pomerol uh, uh, appellation. So as I said, this is only half of the, of, of the appellation. The other half is, is on, the, on the left of your screen. Um, that's the half that is in, interesting for us mainly because the, the, green, the green parts are all the parcels that we own throughout the different uh, uh, vineyards we, we own or manage. Um, and at the same time, it represents, uh, um, the, the right part of the screen represents the, 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 what we call the plateau of Pomerol. The plateau for us is 30 meters and higher. So uh, uh, Lagrange is just below the plateau. The, the lines, the parcel on the right uh, uh, of Lagrange is, is, is really uh, uh, below 30 meters. The parcel just over, which is owned by La Fleur Petrus, uh, uh, is, uh, um, is over uh, um, 30 meters. So, so it's, it's, it's very much the limit. We are on a gentle slope facing north, so cooler vineyards. Um, parcels, um, which, which is great because it, 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 it allows to have a good ripeness um, while keeping a certain freshness. The soils, it's, it's mainly gravel with very light, uh, um, with very light uh, uh, clay, uh, slightly degraded clay already um, on, on, on the right part. And on the left part, that sort of big square, uh, it's much heavier clay uh, where we get the depth and we get where we get the, the richness. Um, in 2015, um, we had a very, we, a very early start uh, as an, uh, for the harvest because we started on September 11, um, but we finished in October. So it was a very long harvest because the, the climate was almost perfect. So we could wait for the perfect maturity. And this is why you, in, 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 the, in this bottle of Lagrange 2015, you, you have some very ripe fruits, but it's not overripe. You have notes of prune, I will say that in French, uh, prune, but not pruneau, you see? 
I don't know how you can translate that if it's prune and not pruno <laughs> with uh, the, the but uh, I, I I don't know how you say pruno in in, in English. The uh, plum plum yeah uh, um, the the pruno d'agent. Um, mm. So you see, you have that softness. It's quite rich, plum, but not prune. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, pruning the vine, of course. Sorry. <laughs> so it's it's fresh plum and not a, a, a plum from Agen, the, the 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 overripe plum. Um, so uh, um, on 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 the palette, as you can see, there's a good richness. There's a, a nice amount of tannins. The tannins are are not perfectly round. They're slightly rustic. In a, in, a, in a sort of farmer uh, farming way. Um, and what, what I mean by, by that is you, 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 you can, there, it's slightly grainy, uh, uh, which helps a lot uh, uh, bringing some character to, uh, to the wine. And there's a nice, a nice freshness without being lemony. You see, uh, it, it, it pulls the wine up, uh, um, uh, it accompanies that richness and it makes it more interesting. Um, there's one thing which is quite uh, uh, um, unique for this vintage of, of Lagrange is there's a big parcel it, that was that had been planted three years prior. So it's the first uh, uh, production of this parcel. Uh, so it's very young vines on pure clay, um, which bring that sort of baby fats in the wine. Uh, um, if, if you if you were to taste a, a slightly older Lagrange that didn't have that parcel in production yet. Um, the, the wine is a little more robust, is a little more muscular. Where here, that that young, the, that that parcel of young vine brought that softness, that 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 caress-like uh, uh, element, um, which defines the the, the 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 wines of Lagrange since 2015, making them much more approachable in their youth, uh, while maintaining that that characteristic of Lagrange of a north-facing vineyard on the northern part of the appellation, which is uh, that sort of uh, quite uh, uh, um, grainy structure with, with quite a bit of depth uh, um, and, and uh, not very, um, uh, uh, there, it's, it's not a, it's, in its youth, it's not a wine that shines. It's, it's really a wine that, that wants to, uh, uh, to, 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 to uh, uh, it's it's a more physical wine. You see, it it wants to 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 get most of, of, of your palate and 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 there's it, it has there's a weight on, on your tongue, unlike La Grave that we will taste after, which is much more elegant, much more musical. It, it shines much more. Um, it's 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 La Grange is earthy in 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 a sense. Yeah. I was just looking at the at the at the, at the en prima tasting note <clears throat> to head any criticism off at the pass. I thought that'd be very wise, and and actually the the the, the single most useful word I wrote was bullseye, which I think meant I we rather liked it. it I don't know. It just seems to come together with the vintage perfectly. It's just it's absolutely I I, I can't fault it. I I just I I love it, and I love it at this relatively youthful age. Do you want to say just a tiny bit about the fifteen vintage and and uh, the the, you... the fifteen vintage? Uh, um, what's quite interesting is, as 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 I mentioned before, um, we have um, we don't have any cold days in, anymore in the winters. Thirty years ago, uh, uh, especially a, a specific winter uh, uh, between eighty six and eighty seven, December eighty six. Uh, I, I remember on the Dordogne River, which is uh, uh, right in front of the office here, uh, um, I, there, there were literally ice cubes being carried by, by, the, by, by a, a fast moving river. So it got really, really cold. I, I, I was going at school at the time and, and we went to school in, in our ski gear. Uh, uh, it was so cold. Um, and, uh, and, and today my, my kids, uh, my kids, uh, my, my son loves soccer and uh, and and he he kind of goes to school in his in his soccer gear um, so it, it has changed a lot and so but 
if we don't have any more uh, a cold wet winter, we do have wet winters. So we had a lot of rain uh, um, during the, the winter of 14 and, and early 15 that was adding to the tremendous amount of rain that we had uh, um, the, in 2013 and, and the, the, the first half of 2014. Um, so the, the, the vines really could find, uh, um, uh, could, you know, was, was fully served in, in terms of, of moisture. And uh, um, when we had uh, the hot weather and dry weather that, that arrived uh, uh, end of May, allowing a very nice flower and then end of June and early July, it got really, really hot. Uh, um, the vines didn't, never fully stressed. That, that heat allowed a, a, a certain blockage of, 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 of the growth of, of, of the vine, which is important uh, in order to start the veraison. Uh, because the vine, a little bit like men, uh, or like me at least, uh, uh, cannot do two things at the same time. Uh, uh, so it cannot uh, keep on growing and, and go through the veraison at the same time. It has to stop growing in, in order to go through the veraison. Um, and, and this is why we don't want to have uh, uh, we don't want to have wet month of, of July because because then the veraison will last for will run for a very very long time and will be uneven and then it's heterogeneous and then uh, uh, it produces wines which are not as as, as supple. Um, so in 2015, the vines uh, stopped growing very quickly. So the veraison after, uh, happened quickly and and, and early. Um, and then uh, the, the, the heat spikes of, of early July didn't happen after, afterwards, but it was still dry. So the, the, the growth of the vine, the, the, the maturity, sorry, of, of the fruit uh, happened very slowly. And um, I mentioned green, uh, uh, green harvest, crop thinning earlier on. Uh, um, one of the things, one of the elements that was uh, almost automatic in, in, the 80, in, in, the, in the 90s and, uh, uh, um, and early 2000s was the leaf cropping, which, was, which is now something that we manage in a completely different way. And 15 was a perfect example. Uh, we, we left quite a lot of leaves on, on the canopy. Uh, so we had slightly wider canopies in order to maintain uh, the, 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 a certain shadow uh, on 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 the on the clusters uh, uh, for them not to burn. Uh, the best example was to, in 2003, uh, as you might remember, we had a massive heat wave uh, um, and end of June, and and all the chateaus uh, that uh, uh, had done a, a massive leaf, leaf cropping fried, literally fried, like an egg in a pan. Uh, um, and uh, uh, I'm sure uh, Adam and Will will remember um, uh, 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 our dear Fiona Tiampon, uh, okay. Fiona Morrison, now Tiampon, uh, um, who, who uh, uh, of course uh, uh, runs Chateau Le Pin in Pomerol. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, uh, French speakers uh, tonight. Um, she, she didn't produce any Le Pin and, and, and she, she claimed this year it's Le Pin grillé um, and the toasted bread uh, and, um, and 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 it, it was it was sort of a shock it was uh, it was a wake-up call uh, um, for many people that were doing heavy uh, 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 leaf cropping uh, to to adapt and maybe to 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 do a light leaf cropping early and 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 then uh, 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 do a, a much heavier one if needed later in, in, in the summer, as we did in 2020, for example, uh, where just before starting the harvest, we went to, 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 to get rid of all the low leaves uh, um, that, that's, that, that were creating a shadow uh, uh, in order to accelerate the, the, the maturity and then be able to, to launch a, a very fast harvest. Um, so we, we do adapt from, from year to year. And in 15, uh, um, we, 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 we did leave a, a wide canopy in order to, to, to protect the, the clusters. And then the harvest happened very early, as I said, September 11 to, to start in Pomerol. And it was a proper start. It was not, it was not a, 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 a soft opening, as, as one would say. Uh, um, we, uh, we, we then uh, um, launched fully the harvest, which, as I said, were extremely long because it, it lasted until, uh, an, an, until October. 
Um, if we move to the next slide, um, well, I mean, it's 100% Merlot, uh, which is not a surprise with us, uh, especially in Pomerol. Uh, we love Merlot. I know many people are, 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 are claiming that uh, Cabernets are, are better than Merlot. Maybe one day, uh, not today. We, we have some beautiful Cabernet in, uh, at Osana. Uh, we have some beautiful Cabernet at La Fleur Petrus. Um, we, we just replanted a very nice parcel, hopefully, uh, uh, at Trotanois. Um, but today, when we work on the blends, and, um, and just for, for the, the, the sake of the exercise and to send a little note uh, uh, on the 2020 Trotanois to Adam this morning, yesterday we did a, a, a trial blend of Trotanois. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and I can assure you, there's no need to add any Cabernet in, in that blend. The Merlot does a perfect job. Um, and it is the signature of Pomerol. There's so few places in the world where you can find decent Merlot, uh, uh, needless to say, great Merlot. Uh, uh, we, need to, we, we, we need to keep our identity. Um, and, and what we've seen in Spain, what we've seen in Italy and in so many other places in the world, great uh, 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 wine producing region going back to their, their original grape variety uh, uh, in, in order to, to find their character, their, their unicity. Uh, uh, and that, I think that's what we are all running after uh, uh, in the world today on, on every single field we, we, we are touching. Uh, um, it's, I, I feel that it's, it's, it hasn't been more important in the history of Pomerol to, 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 to concentrate on Merlot. Merlot is a difficult grape variety. It takes, uh, it, it's a fragile grape variety. It takes a lot of efforts, a lot of work, a lot of attention, a lot of, 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 uh, of pampering, you know. Uh, um, we, are, we are like a nanny to, to, to our vines. Um, and, and the more we know, the more we understand, the more we discover, uh, uh, the, the, more, uh, 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 the, the, the more attention we bring to each vine, uh, uh, the more we love Merlot, I, 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 I must admit. Um, and uh, uh, so the, the, the only thing we have, to, we have to pay attention to, and it has nothing to do with Merlot, it's true with every grape variety, is the alcohol. Uh, uh, that's the new, the new effect uh, uh, of, of the global warming and mainly of the sun, which is much more burning today uh, uh, than, 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 than before. Um, the, the impact it has on the skin of, of, of the berries, but it's true for, for Merlot, as it's true for, for Cabernet and any grape variety. So we are, we are Merlot, Mer, Merlot defenders and uh, and, and I can assure you, uh, uh, I, I will fight to, to, to keep that identity. Um, if we move to, um, well, that's, that's the soil, but we, you see, uh, you have gravel on the left, clay on the, on the right, uh, the famous blue clay uh, uh, of the plateau of Pomerol. Actually, that picture was taken uh, at Bellermonange in Saint-Emilion, but uh, uh, it's the same vein of clay that we have. Um, but, and, and, and the gravelly, uh, the, the gravelly soil is taken at, at Trotanois. So, but you have the, the two perfect identity of, of, of Pomerol, uh, of those great soils of Pomerol. And depending on where you are, it's more or less blended. Uh, some parcels are pure gravel, some parcels are pure clay, uh, uh, and most of them, most of them are, are blended. And uh, in, in, in vineyards like, like, like uh, Latour or, or, or Lagrange, the, the clay is not as thick as the one you have in the picture here. Um, the, the clay is, uh, is a little more degraded, as I said earlier, um, which allow the vine to produce slightly more approachable wines. Uh, the clay will bring a depth and a concentration in the wine that is typical of Trotanois, of course. So, um, so then the next wine, because we're all getting very thirsty. So uh, again, the same map um, in red in, in, in this time, the, the vineyard of Chateau Lagrave à Pomerol. Uh, so Lagrave is not on the plateau. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's still slightly below the plateau. It's on the western part of the appellation, uh, as you see. Um, it's facing west. It's on a gentle slope, uh, so much warmer. And there it's pure gravel. 
Um, there's, there's hardly any clay. There's a little bit of clay uh, uh, in the subsoil. So it, it retains the amount of, of moisture that the vine needs when its root system is properly established. On the young vines, it's pure gravel. So it produces wines which are much more elegant, uh, uh, much more refined with a higher acidity. Um, and uh, um, uh, 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 it, it's slightly more complex aromatically as well. And if I could just remind um, uh, the, the, the team to keep the first wine, to keep the Lagrange, so you can make a direct comparison uh, glass by glass. Uh, that would be that would be fun. Because they could not be more different. It's fascinating. Yeah. And, 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 and Pardon, no, no, no. I was just saying, I mean, you, you think, OK, Lagrange is 100 percent melee, but uh, Lagrange normally, what, 80 percent odd? Uh, well, I mean, this this blend is 100 percent Merlot. Well, there we go, there we go, uh, 100%, and yet uh, geographically separated by not an awful lot, but profoundly different wines. And same vintage, oh, this is what I love, this is what I love about the sort of specificity of, uh, of vineyard is, is uh, wonderful to see. And yeah. particularly at such an early age, or quite an early age. As, as, as you can see, I mean, I, I'm sure it's hard to, to, to imagine on the map, but uh, um, between the, the parcel of Lagrange and the parcel of Lagrave, it's less than 500 meters. Um, oops, there's the alarm being put on. Um, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's fine. I, 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 I'll try not to move too much. <laughs> uh, uh, I apologize. Um, but it, it, there's less than 500 meters, so it's very, very tiny. And, and that's why I, 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 I wanted to show you that map, because um, you can see precisely well the, 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 the parcels themselves. Uh, um, and remember, we are in, in, on the right bank. We are especially in Pomol. Pomol is 800 hectares. And what we see on the, on the screen there is 300 hectares. So it's, it's smaller than your, your shooting ground. Uh, um, and, and, and yet, there's so many chateaus being, being produced there. Um, and uh, 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 so, but as, as Adam underlined, is it's the identity of the soil that is key. And as much as some people sometimes say there's a Muex style in Pomol, which is something I, 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 I don't feel, uh, I don't take as a, as a compliment. Uh, um, it's, uh, um, if, if you go a little more in depth in, in, in the wine, uh, um, there, there, there is a huge difference between the wines. And that's why that tasting is interesting. Uh, it's the same team. It's exactly the same approach. It's the same sorting table. It's not the same cellar, but uh, you know, when we harvest, we don't harvest a vineyard uh, uh, in one go, and then the next one, we, we will come and pick one parcel of Lagrange, then we'll pick one parcel of La Fleur Petrus, then we'll pick one parcel of Lagrave, uh, then we'll pick one of uh, Saint-Belermonange in Saint-Emilion, and then come back to, to, to Pomerol. So we really adapt to the ripeness of, of the parcel. Sometimes it's half a parcel, um, and uh, uh, um, and, and with the with the harvest uh, the, the harvest troops, uh, there is a sorting table that follows and, and goes from one cellar to another, um, and so we, we always we always try to optimize the, the, the we always try to optimize the the, the, the ripeness of, of the fruit, uh, um, and and but in order to do that, I mean we do that in order to fully express the character of, of the vineyard because if we wanted to impose a moix style as one uh, 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 can can could could claim, um, we would either harvest very early and all our wines would be green and that would be the moix style. Uh, uh, or we would harvest very late and all our wines would be cooked and that would be the Moex style. But since uh, uh, we love wine and we love, of course, making wine, but more, 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 more uh, uh, we, we actually love drinking wine, uh, um, you know, the, 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 the diversity of all those, those uh, uh, vineyards uh, uh, gives us more pleasure uh, ev every day uh, and at the same time allows us to to learn more and more every year because uh, um, you know it's it's in fashion now since the, the last decennie to talk about data 
we talk about data everywhere. Um, we have in Bordeaux probably one of the most amazing weather data in the world. Uh, um, I mean, I, I was looking at a bottle of 1892 the other day, uh, 1892 Bel Air, uh, uh, which I, I, I had in my cellar because I actually drank it since then. Um, and I can tell you that on August 15, 1892, uh, it was 40, 43 degrees. Um, and uh, uh, where, where in the world will you get that kind of, uh, that kind of information? Um, you know, so it's, it's, we leave from data, and this is why it's so important. Uh, uh, it makes such a big difference to have family vineyards. And not only family own, because at the end of the day, everything is family own one way or another, family run vineyards. Because uh, uh, as much as it's, it's hard to, to walk with your son or your, your father, uh, um, you, you feed one another uh, uh, um, fr from all that, that information and, and you pass on uh, uh, everything. You know, the other day I, I was talking to our old cellar master, uh, uh, Francois Vessier, who, was a, who is a wonderful man. He, he's got the the memory of an elephant um, and and he was telling me that um, I, I was questioning him about la, the famous La Tour 61 um, and la, la Tour 61 is probably one of the most famous bottles in the world uh, um, and, and I was asking him uh, why why is it so great uh, uh, did we only use one parcel because at the time his father was the cellar master uh, um, did we only use one parcel uh, that was highly concentrated and it was very young vines uh, because everything had been replanted after the frost of 1956 uh, um, and he said no 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 it's not that there's sugar left in the in the in the wine because the the fermentations lasted forever. We never managed to finish the fermentation technique at the time was non-existent, um, and so there's sugar remaining in the wine, and that's why the sixty ones are so great and so generous and so opulent since day one. It's because they're sweets. Uh, same thing as the the famous Cheval Blanc forty seven. Why is Cheval Blanc forty seven such a great bottle? There's sugar left in it, um, and 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 those vintages were very hot vintages, uh, uh, were vintages where the sun was ex the amount of sun was exceptional, um, and this is why again the the reason why in Bordeaux we've been and in many other regions in in France and in the world, but we we've been producing such a, a an unbelievable series of very good wines, and I'm not talking about vintage on purpose, very good wines, it's because we have the sun um, and we're blessed with, with an amazing amount of sun. Um, so La Grave, going back to La Grave, sorry, uh, um, it's, it's much more concentrated, it's, it's one little block, Pure, pure gravel, especially on the right part, which is the highest part of the of, 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 of the vineyard. On the left part, just below the house, uh, there it's a little more sandy. Um, and to be honest, we don't include those parcels in, in, in the wine anymore. We used to have a, a second label called uh, a Domaine Trigant de Boissé, uh, okay. which had been created in 1991 when we declassified uh, all the production of our 91s. Um, and, and Adam knows by heart all the names that were invented, uh, created at the time. A few uh, survived, uh, um, and Domaine Trigon de Boissé was one. Um, and, but on such a small vineyard, having a second label, it, it's not our job. Uh, um, second labels are great on big vineyards and which have uh, a different parcels that have a completely different identity. Uh, uh, but on, on tiny parcels like La Grave, which is only eight hectares, uh, um, we, we, uh, uh, we, we, it makes no sense. So we, we much rather concentrate on the Grand Vin and what, what doesn't go into the Grand Vin goes into our generic Pomerol, uh, uh, which is absolutely delicious and extremely good, good value. Uh, and that's the most important. We want people to drink. The more you drink, the, the happier everybody will be. <laughs> But anyway, you made a good point about uh, 1991, which perhaps I should have made at the beginning, because it is very, very rare that a great producer of wine misses a vintage. Uh, they will do anything to keep a vintage. And, and the decision you made uh, to declassify everything in 1991, uh, uh, no Petros, no Totenois, 
de la Tour, nothing was, was, must have been incredibly difficult, or certainly difficult for us because we had nothing to sell, um, but it must have been impossibly difficult for you. But a, a pretty profound tribute to, to the sort of quality of yardsticks by which you drive. And, and I, I remember those wines that weren't wines. That, I mean, you, you mentioned the Domaine on the but there was Marsan, I remember, was another one, and Beauvillard, which was, uh, which was perhaps our favorite, which I think was Toshima, and I can't remember. But it was, uh, it's, it's quite not unique, but rare, very, very rare in Bordeaux uh, to miss a vintage uh, in one stroke like that. And it's a, it's a pretty profound gesture to make uh, on behalf of your customers. Right, that's the boring bit over well, there. I mean, it's, it's a very good point you're making. And, uh, and at the same time for us, it, it's key because, you know, we all have our problems in Bordeaux uh, as a producer, I mean, anywhere but as a producer we all have our problem on, on a given vintage we don't produce enough we produce too much it's not ripe enough it's too ripe it's etc et that's our life and we don't have to bore you with that and as a wine merchant when i go and visit producers and they tell me oh but my price has to be higher because i, pro I produce less wine i keep on telling them that's not the, uh, the right argument because uh, uh, um, the, the, the person who buys a case of your wine every year will still buy a case of your wine every year. And, and there is no reason why he should pay a higher price because you produce less. Um, and uh, uh, we, you know, having in mind uh, uh, the, the, the pure pleasure of the consumer at every step of, of, the, of, of the, the wine production and wine making, uh, um, the, the, the uh, we, we, we can't uh, um, risk to, to, to damage the image uh, of, 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 of one property uh, um, just because we, you know, uh, oh, everybody knows we froze on the night of the 20th to the 21st of April. Nobody knows. Uh, um, I mean, you remember, uh, um, but so few people know that. And at the end of the day, there's no reason why they should think about that when they drink the wine, because you want to think about happy moments, happy things. You don't want to, to, to think about yeah. burdens, you know. Um, and that's why, I mean, Osana, for example, which is a very tiny vineyard, it's 4.5 hectares in 2013. It's very old vines, Osana, 13, which was a cool vintage. We didn't manage to bring uh, uh, th those vines to, to, to a right level of maturity. We didn't produce any Osana 13 because it's not worth uh, damaging the, the great image of this property, you know. And, and for us, again, the pleasure of the consumer, the pleasure of drinking. Wine is a beverage. We, we should never forget yeah. that. Um, yeah. And, and Edouard, if I, if I might, on, on that exact point, do you have a preferred age at which you like to drink La Grave or La Grange? I mean, just to well, give people a little bit of guidance. One of the big evolution and one of the big gain with, uh, uh, with the... the, the, the the, 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 the technical uh, uh, improvement in the sellers is that we have been able to adapt to the size of the sellers of, our, of, of, of the consumers. Um, and, and one of the big problem today is space. Um, yeah. Very few people have a proper seller. Um, and, and therefore, most people drink their wines much younger than, than, than they used to. So our job was to maintain the ageability of the wine, uh, um, and that's key because I think that's the signature of, of, the, of the great wines, uh, at least the great wines from France, uh, um, while uh, um, allowing them to be more approachable in their youth. Mm -hmm. So yes, those wines will be different and potentially better in 10 years or 15 years, um, but at the same time, they are extremely approachable now. The, the shape of the tannins uh, uh, allow them to, to not be, be too aggressive. There's a, there's, there's a nice palette of, 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 of primary fruits, uh, um, and, and it gives good pleasure. So personally, I drink my wines at any age today, and it really depends on, the, on, on what, what, what's open. Last night, I drank a bottle of Bellermont Ange 18 that had been open for a tasting. Um, and, you know, my wife told me, oh, it's young and powerful. Maybe we shouldn't finish the bottle. 20 minutes later, it was done. Um, and yes, that bottle will be 
way more interesting in 20 years, but I assure you last night was delicious. Um, okay. And so it's, it's I, I think that's the, the great positive elements that, that we have today in wine is we have the choice where before we didn't have the choice. Um, okay. Okay. But but clearly, I had a bottle of uh, of, of, of La Grave 2005 uh, uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, the wine was absolutely beautiful. They were aromas of of cigar, of of truffle that 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 were that had developed in the wine, and 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 it was really really good. Um, but but it was as as good for completely different for completely different reasons as 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 this class tonight. So it really depends on your taste and the opportunity and what you feel like. It's, it's the consumer that decides it's, it, it shouldn't be us, you know, um, or at least I, we don't have that type of pretension. Yeah, and I have to say that the, 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 the vintage lends itself to approachability without, I think any of us making the mistake of underestimating their ability to keep if you want them to. That's what I love about 15, I think, I think we can see this now. And in fact, I'd love uh, if we moved on to Latour. Yes. Uh, and, yeah, and, and because it's more. so um, wildly different. So Latour, as you can see, so I, I don't know if you have in mind the, 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 the parcels uh, that we saw. So the, 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 north, the northern lines was, was, was Lagrange. And then we moved to, to the, the, the western part, the left part, which was, which was Lagrave. And now you have in red those, those parcels of, of Latour. So as you can see, everything is, is very close to one another. Actually, Latour and Lagrave are for, for half of the part or a third of the parcels are next to one another. Um, yet again, a completely different wine. And what makes the difference in this case it's the parcels that, that are on, on the center of the screen, uh, which are on the plateau this time, uh, so 30 meters and higher. That's our definition of the plateau. Huh? Uh, the people that are at 25 meters claim that the plateau starts at 25 meters, uh, yeah. but uh, um, it, it's, that's, that's, that's the way it goes. Um, but the, the, those parcels of, uh, of, of La Tour Pomerol are exceptional. And so uh, um, you have the, the, the sort of easy approachability that comes from, from the slightly lower parcel of the plateau. And you have the, the complexity and, and, and the length and, and the, the balance that comes and, and the, the, the fruit complexity, the, 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 that panel of, of, of fruit that comes from, from the, 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 the parcels in, in the center. It is a fantastic vineyard. It's a vineyard that we had to replant quite heavily in the last few years. Uh, uh, hence, maybe that sort of, you know, uh, uh, inequality between the, the, the vintages because on such small vineyards, it's, it's again, eight hectares only. Uh, um, in, on, there's actually a big parcel that, has, that is in red uh, that is owned by La Fleur Petrus. So it's, it's not as big as that on, in, in the center of, of, of your screen. Um, but uh, um, it's when on such a small vineyard, when you replant the entire, uh, I mean, a parcel out of eight hectares, you will replant a hectare and a half. Uh, um, obviously, that will change completely the, the style of the wine. Um, so uh, uh, I, I reckon that 2009 was really the, the turning point where, where Latour was back, was fully back on its game. Um, mm. I, I had the Latour 09 not long ago, uh, um, and uh, actually it was in a Magnum, and it was so good, so good. I mean, it was luscious. Um, it's so good. I mean, we love 09, and, and I reckon that 2015 is it would be sort of the, the the younger brother of 2009 because you have that generosity in yeah. the flesh and in the in, in in the gentleness of the shape of the tannins uh, um, and Lagrange 09 uh, I don't have a bottle left uh, uh, La Tour 09 it's it's almost down to zero there's a few cases that I I, I, I managed to hide from my from from my my, my father um, and uh, <laughs> uh, um, uh, and uh, uh, um, and uh, the, the La Grave 09, uh, I think I have 20 cases left. So you, that's just a consumption of a few, of couple of months. So it's it's really uh, uh, it's 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 a vintage that we love. And even if it's too young, almost in a sense, it's so good. There's there why 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 waiting? So La, La, La Tour 2015. So La Tour is again 100% Merlot on the vineyard and in the blend. Mm. Mm. Pardon. I, 
I don't know. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I usually don't say that kind of things, but I, I think it's actually very good. Um, <laughs> it is wonderful. It's, <laughs> it's, it's there's. I mean, now you can see the plateau and the non-plateau. Uh, that's clear. That's that's that's. It, it, it's transparent. Um, you see the complexity you have in this wine and the acceleration. You see how it grows on your palate and it takes over all your mouth and your nose and your head. And, and you have notes of licorice, uh, you know, the licorice stick, but with the freshness of violet. Uh, uh, you have dark chocolate, but 70%, not too bitter. Um, you, you, you have those that, that it's almost, uh, um, it's a dark wine. You see, the, it's almost, how do you call those stones that, that those black stones, which are very dense, yet very shiny? Uh, um, ah, how is it called? Um, um, uh, uh, on, not onyx. Is it onyx? Yeah, no, on, yeah, onyx. Sorry. Onyx? Onyx, yes. You, you see, you, it's, it's dark, it's deep, but it shines at the same time. Uh, um, uh, uh, there's quite a lot of alcohol. It's kind of it's it's quite uh, obvious, but it's not burning. You see, and and it it brings the alcohol in this case brings the flesh, uh, and it wraps those tannins. There's a lot of tannins. There's a huge amount of tannins there, but you don't taste them. They don't dry your palate because they are very soft. They're, they're the tannins of the skin, and I'm going to use that to to actually define what Bordeaux is for me, because. Lately, we, we're, we've been lucky to have tremendous amount of fruit. There are some blackberries as well, you know, those perfectly ripe blackberries, which are still, uh, still quite acidic. Uh, uh, and so it, 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 you know, it really brings liveliness in, in, on the palate. And it's so long, sorry. Um, but the, the, the definition of the wines from Bordeaux for me, it's the tannins. Uh, um, it, there's regions, uh, 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 Argentina, for example, it's the fruit. Uh, uh, um, the, in, in Bordeaux, if we have ripe tannins, we, 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 we have a, a good to great uh, uh, vintage, you know, because uh, if, if your tannins are not ripe, uh, um, then they will be square, they will be angular, and they will have that awful effect on top of being green as well, uh, uh, to, to dry your mouth. Uh, um, and, and therefore the experience will not be pleasant. And then you will have to wait for your wine to be 10, 15, 20, 25 years old in order to, 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 to have a, a, the, the complexity of the tertiary aromas that arrive, that develop, and then it will balance that sort of aggressivity of the tannins when they're young. Where here, you have some beautiful ripe tannins. There's, there's, there's a large amount of tannins, but they are key in order to balance with the alcohol and the acidity, because there's a lot of acidity in those wines. And, and it's, that, it's that complementarity of those elements uh, um, that allow the wine to, to really go one or two steps higher. Um, and, uh, um, as, as Adam was saying in the introduction, La Tour Pomerol is one of the, the great vineyards of, 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 uh, of, of Bordeaux and of, of Pomerol. Uh, uh, let's stick to where we are. Uh, but, and, and it's probably the, the, the best value you will find because it's, it suffers from being in our stable. Uh, um, and I shouldn't say that because it's uh, it, it's a failure on our side, um, but we we are extremely lucky to have a fairly wide uh, range of, of 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 properties in Pomerol, uh, um, and Latour is a little lost in translation. Uh, um, uh, um, but uh, uh, you know people concentrate on Trotanois, La Fleur Petrus. Then there is Osana that is there, and, and there's Osana is is so tiny that it's 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 the connoisseur's uh, uh, wine, and and so it, it works well. It's uh, uh, people enjoy it, but La Tour, you know, sadly it's it's attached to La Grave and La Grange and La Fleur Gazin, which is our other vineyard in in, in sort of that category, uh, uh, where in fact it, it's clearly part of the Grand Vin of of, of, of our portfolio, and and I think tonight uh, it's it's clear uh, um, you have two very nice wines. They're very pretty. They're pleasant. They're easy to drink. You open a bottle, you're sure you will open a second one, uh, um, and that's our aim. We want to make you thirsty. We want you to drink more uh, um, because it. it 
you know, there's nothing more exciting than a conversation with a, with a little hint of wine. Uh, uh, it will go deeper, it will go further. Sometimes it will get a little warmer, in, uh, especially in France, where, when, when we talk about politics. But, uh, um, but you know, it's, it's, it's great. That's what makes, I mean, my wife is American. And, and uh, uh, sometimes when I talk to my mother, she says, oh, but calm down. And we're like, no, we're Okay, um, you know we're French, but it's that heat is 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 sort of a, a fueled by a very good bottle of wine, um, and and it's key, and and that's that's what we want to that's what we want to promote that it's that lifestyle that that we we enjoy so much. Um, where La Tour tonight, it's a very serious wine. Uh, um, it, it's clearly too young. It, you, you, it's, you, you can enjoy it. It's very good tonight, but you will get so much more in five years. Uh, um, I shouldn't say that it's not very commercial, but uh, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 we are really in the world of the great Pomerol there. I'm going to have another series. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful wine. Wonderful wine. It's quite decadent. If I had to put a word to it, I'd probably go with decadent. I just, it's, it's very classy. I'm, I'm yeah. But it also has, and I, I was just looking at the, at the en primaire notes, uh, it has that quality of, of the, the quality is just roll, 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 uh, endlessly uh, towards the finish. I mean, it, it's, it's, I think it's a fabulous wine. I'm horribly biased. I, but I'm well aware, and I should have said at the start, Edouard, that you are surrounded by friends, because I think every single one of the participants this evening uh, have, a, have a pretty good set full of your wine. And I know that my best chum, um, uh, Jamie Ede, who's somewhere in there, um, has every single vintage of Hosanna going back to the very first one, which was 1999, I think. And so it's, it's wonderful to be able to have a, just a snapshot in time of one vintage and to see this literally fan of profound differences between just three wines. Uh, and before I perhaps open it up to any questions that, that, that might come from, from the virtual floor, uh, it, it's worth noting, because Edward was too modest to admit it, that what the Muex family did with uh, the right bank and Pomerol in particular, and of course, uh, St. Emilia by association and at the highest level with Belém Monage that Edward did touch on earlier, uh, is to put uh, the right bank of Bordeaux onto the map of the world, not just of, of France uh, uh, or of Europe, but of the world. And, and, I, and I do occasionally tease, and you've probably heard this before, um, but our very lordly and grand cousins um, in the West End of London used to tease me, and indeed Will, as recently as that, about, oh, Connie Bear, of course you do those Pomerols, don't you, such charming wines. And it was a it was a sort of it was a sort of put down. Well, uh, those charming wines have now become uh, the most iconic wines in the world of of wine. Never mind the world of Bordeaux. And I think a huge amount of no, I know that the greatest credit for that uh, resides uh, with with the Merck's family. And it's amazing now, 30, 40, 50 years on, uh, to see the reputation that rests in these wines, and that's, a, that's a, an astonishing tribute to the, to, to the family. As those who come to our dinners, and my word, we can't wait to start doing dinners again, and Edouard will be over at the, at the drop of a hat, I know. Um, I, but we I can't wait to start doing that again, but, but thank you all for being here. Um, I love the obsessive translators phrase. I think I, I, I've written that one down. Um, but thank you, Edouard, very much for, for doing this, and, and Colin for, for, for helping and, and, and everything as well. Um, it's been the most bizarre of years, as, as everyone's seen. Um, and I would just like to thank the entire team. And when I say team, actually, what I mean is from, from Edouard, the producer, to our own home team, who I have to say have been brilliant, um, as I'm sure yours have, Edouard, as well. It's, it's just been a weird year. But the team I extend on to, to customers, because actually, without all of you, uh, Edouard, maybe, Cornelian Barrow certainly would not be in the wonderfully privileged position we are of, of, of having had a good if odd year. And we must all keep drinking wine. COVID has been um, what it's been and we will all battle on. Um, we all want to be drinking good wine. So um, thank you all for your support this year. Happy Christmas. Drink well. And thank you all. Merry Happy Christmas. Christmas. Thank you very much.
and thank you.